<laughs> we are so busy equipping the next generation that we rarely see the previous ones. Highly skilled and life aware, standing, waiting to be given something to do. We don't know the context of this quote, nor who said it. We can only vouch it's all too accurate. We throw the term generation around in everyday life. <coughs> but can you raise your hand if you know the definition? And how many of you know what generation you're part of? <laughs> okay, for those of you that didn't raise your hand, a generation is all the people born and living at around the same time, regarded collectively. We are a room full of the silent generation, baby boomers, millenn millennials, generation X and generation Z. Five generations all responsible for the next, all responsible for each other. As a group, we don't have an extensive knowledge of generation, and we can only speak from our experiences. My name is Jessica Clark, and I'll be our chairperson for this evening. In the centre is Amelia Hewitt, who will be our main speaker, and to the left is Gracie Clark, who will be our vote of thanks. We three are members of Generation Z, a generation of snowflake social media and so much drama. We can't argue that these, can't argue that these things aren't true. They're fact. But there are some stereotypes that don't truly reflect every individual. But that's the same with every generation. I'm not a bleary-eyed, anti-social shutting glued to my phone. My parents didn't ruin politics and my grandparents don't fear technology. What I'm trying to get at is that there is a spectrum of which many lie in the middle. So how does this affect the next generation? How are we affecting the next generation? I would like to pass you over to Amelia Hewitt, our main speaker for this evening. Thank you. Nurturing the younger generation has many areas to explore. To begin with, we'll pick up the glass that's half empty. In reference to a subject that Jessica previously touched upon is the unrelenting question of are we raising, to use the colloquial term, snowflakes. We hear it in news articles, across social media and in our daily lives, but what is a snowflake, you may ask? To put it simply, a wuss, an overly sensitive underachiever. As comical as it sounds, and we all laugh, this has become the identity of an entire generation. The youngest victims of the snowflake curse are Generation Alpha, those born after 2010. Recently, we heard of an argument suggesting that primary school sports days should ban competition, promoting the idea that instead of having a hierarchy of achievement, that every child is a winner. But there is a winner. It's the child that runs the fastest, throws the beanbag the furthest, and keeps the egg on the spoon. <laughs> Not exactly Olympic grade sports, but still requiring an element of skill. So what can we do? Shelter one student's self-esteem by not praising another? Diminish first place because last place started crying? But surely by diminishing these podium places, we're feeding into the beliefs of a snowflake philosophy. And this is why it still exists. Instead of teaching children that it is wrong to rank based on their ability, we should be teaching them the brutal truth. Life isn't easy, and you have to work hard for what you want. Today's world is more competitive than it ever has been, and maybe ever will be, so we should be considering a more realistic form of nurturing. Returning to Generation Z, our generation, it appears to be that in comparison to the Friday nights of our grandparents in the era of dance halls, rock and roll music and jazz, the liberation that we experience as teenagers today is extensively stunted. In a modern society, we completely understand how unrealistic it is to let your 16-year-old daughter into the care of an eligible bachelor on a Friday night. But isn't it a shame that you can't? <laughs> <laughs> is this the result of young people being mollycoddled due to their parents' fears of society? Or is it that the idea of overprotectiveness certainly outweighs learning through experience? Our grandparents, on the whole, raised their children through their own experiences, their own hardships and their own achievements. However, it seems to us that our generation is slowly being raised on the principles of fear and overprotectiveness. Is this the root cause for the mellowed and sensitive generation that we have become labelled as? If we aspire to nurture upcoming generations, then we have to consider possibly adopting the formally accepted methods of child raising. This will mean that we allow them to flourish, but through their own experiences. We have explored the younger generations, however, it would be completely unrealistic of us 
to ignore the impending idea of inclusiveness. If we aspire to nurture, we have to understand that without being fair to everyone, this is simply not possible. Recently, we heard of a new segment suggesting that older people should be forced to sell their lavish homes to make way for younger families. I don't know about your grandparents, but Jess's nan needs at least five bedrooms for all of her clothes and knickknacks. <laughs> <laughs> all humour aside, this is not a solution. You cannot take away from one person to give to another and call it nurturing. It's only going to nurture resentment. On a slightly more optimistic note, there is an inherent sense of community throughout generations, and this could easily be harnessed to promote nurturing of the young generation. Think of your typical family. You have grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, children. In most families there are four generations, each with varying experiences. You share information, anecdotes, life lessons, so what if we could replicate this with generations? During the thought process for this speech, we proposed the idea of generational collaboration. This would mean an increased communication of ideas throughout generations in every sector of society. Inevitably, times are changing and the way we manage our society is evolving. Gone are the days of young people being receptive to lectures. Youth Speaks, in our experience, is one of the first events unknowingly to celebrate this idea of collaboration. We stand here as three young women, educating an audience of both older and younger generations. However, there is the unrelenting question that may be playing on your minds. Is this going to change anything? Certainly not overnight, however, we can work towards a society that honours the needs and opinions of every generation, while still taking into account that we are nurturing the younger generation. Thank you very much. I'd now like to introduce our vote of thanks, Gracie Clark. Thank you, Jess. We through stand is Generation Z, a generation of technology savvy, overly opinionated, Taylor Swift obsessed teenagers. <laughs> but this makes us no better than our predecessors. This makes us no less accountable for our actions. This makes us no less responsible for the nurturing and the raising and the educating of the younger generation. Continuing from Olivia's, uh, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Continue from Amelia's point. We do appreciate that there are many contributing factors to the current generation segregation, but that means that there are also many solutions. We post the idea of generation collaboration, the idea of unifying the age groups. This, in turn, will create a positive environment for the next generation, but also set the tone of how generations should be interacting, as opposed to clashing. Now, we're not going to suggest to you an elaborate three-point plan this year. However, all we ask of you as an individual to take away from tonight is try and find a way for you to integrate this idea into your everyday life. And I'm sure you'll find it's not as hard as you think. Before we conclude tonight, I would like to say a few thank yous. Firstly, thank you to the judges and you, the audience, for giving us the opportunity to perform to you our speech. Also, thank you to our other teams for showing such wonderful enthusiasm in your own topics. It's fantastic. Furthermore, we'd like to thank Miss Katie Huttlestone, our Youth Speaks coordinator and support system throughout this whole process. Finally, I encourage you all to put your hands together for our fantastic team. Jess and Amelia have gone above and beyond what was expected this year and for the second year running we have worked well not only as a team but, and as cliche as it sounds, we have become our own little family. Thank you so much.
for nurturing anything. What's your opinion? You certainly make a very valid point with that, and I can personally agree with you that it is very unrealistic of us to propose nurturing a generation that is constantly like this. Um, but with our idea of generational collaboration, a part of what we are discussing sort of suggests the idea that young people don't often feel like they're being listened to, but then older people sometimes feel like they're not being listened to. So it works in both ways. So with this idea of generational collaboration, it would mean that because younger people got more of a voice, they would maybe be more interested in investing their time into more important issues than their phone. It's a massive trial and error process, and I think a large part of this is working out how it works for individual people. So certainly maybe talking more about ideas on the bigger parts of society could work in this technology addiction that our generation seems to develop. So picking up on uh, should we be voting at 16 or 18, where do you stand on that as far as nurturing is concerned? If you're also busy on your phones, where are you getting the information from that's going to make you worldly wise sufficiently to have a vote? I can only speak from my personal experiences with this, um, but I definitely think that there is a lot more interest in worldly issues with young people than we present there to be. Because we're constantly on our phones, we often see the news, we see social media, and a large part of that is political, religious, all different things from society that do affect us. So I do think that that is a contributing factor, that technology could help us become more educated. And in terms of voting, I mean, we've shown, we people make mistakes, and younger generations are more susceptible for that, because we're young and we're just trying out new things. So it's definitely going to be a process of we learn in the ways we can but we should also communicate with everyone and the voting age should probably not be lowered yet whilst we're still working these things out. Thank you. Thank you.